Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's IAS classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to see current affairs of 17th August 2022. So let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see today's quote. So today's quote is about knowledge. So knowledge is of no value unless you put into practice. So what is this quote talks about? So if I have knowledge, but I can't explain the thing clearly means so what is the use of my knowledge? And one more thing I want to quote here is, so if you have much knowledge, but you're not practicing it, for example, you're not writing answers, for example, you're not practicing your prelims, practice questions, then what is the use of your knowledge? Right? So try to use your knowledge as far as possible. Try to practice. So without practice, your knowledge is waste. So I hope, so this will boost your practice. So now let us try to say first topic. So first topic, we are going to see one important editorial from our Hindu. So stepping back from ecological upsize. So this article is talking about development and environment and ecology. So we are going to see some important reports, some data. So please try to add that data in your data book so that that will be very important for your mains answers. And we are also going to see some important facts and as well as some important ideas regarding so how development will having some effect on environment and ecology. So this topic is important from our ethics point of view and even from our environment and ecology and also from our economy point of view. Okay. So now let us try to see this topic and this topic is exclusively important from your means, not from prelims. So from pre prelims, you can't expect question from this area. So but from mains, for sure, 100% you can expect a question. So we are talking about data. According to Nidhi Aayog report, 600 million people in India face high to extreme water stress. Okay. So 600 million people in India they face high to extreme water stress and nearly about 70 percentage of water being contaminated and india's rank here is 120 out of 122 countries in water quality index that means we are seeing a very bad water quality in india so this is according to the io report and one more important cause of concern here is land degradation land desertification so they are taking place over 30 percentage of our land according to ISRO. So according to ISRO about 30 percentage of our land. So we are facing land degradation as well as desertification. So average levels of land productivity it is about one fourth or one fifth what they could be pumping in artificial fertilizers it restores a bit but cost of pushing the soil further towards death. Okay, so when we want to increase the land productivity, yes, we are using these fertilizers, for example, urea, for example, DAP, etc. And by using this artificial fertilizer, yes, it is pumping some amount of uh, land productivity, but it will further lead to death of soil. And if you are talking about food items, it all in, especially in most cities, they have pesticide residues. For example, you will be getting some processed food. For example, you will be also taking some chips, etc. That will be like uh, coming in the packaged foods. So in our packaged foods, yes, we have some pesticide residues. And actually these residues are above the normal safety levels. And if you're talking about the World Bank report, it says that it reported that in 2013, India was losing about 5.7 percentage of GDP, that is gross domestic product. It is due to environmental damage. So due to environmental damage, so we are losing about 5.7 percentage of our GDP. And recent global environmental ranking by Yale and Columbia universities, they puts India at bottom among 180 countries. Okay, India rank is 180 out of 180. So these are some important data regarding India's performance in different areas which are particularly related to environment. So if you are talking about favoring corporate access, 
So in fact, government is dismantling environmental and social security policies in favor to corporate access. Yes, government which is providing permission or granting license or access to mining and some developmental activities or construction projects or infrastructure development. So it is giving or it is doing some favor towards this corporate access to land and natural resources. Okay, so this is the thing which mainly said and recently our government of India which mainly want to amend some important laws like forest and environment laws and environment impact assessment notification. So in this way here we can see a government which is providing or which is focusing on priority of building massive physical infrastructure even though it is having some negative impact on our uh, environment. And if you're talking about, for example, even in the budget 2022 to 2023 budget, so government came up with allocation for highways, okay, that alone is 40 times which is greater than the budget of Ministry of Environment and Forest and Climate Change. So what are the budget which is allocated to this ministry? It is 40 times highest, okay, when we are comparing to the allocation which is provided for this highways. That means government is pro, it is focusing on infrastructure development, it is physical infrastructure. So here one more thing we have to focus here is, so wildlife and biodiversity, they had been the sufferers. So because of the steps which are taken by the government, they are focusing on exclusively development, infrastructure projects. So they are giving access to this corporate, okay. So what happened because of this? Who will be the ultimate or final sufferers? So final sufferers will be our wildlife and as well as biodiversity. And that will have a severe socio-cultural cost as well. So over 60 million people, they have been physically displaced by developmental projects in last few decades. So in last few decades, because of these developmental projects, for example, you can talk about roads, you can talk about mining, you can talk about construction of dams, etc. That led to displacement of 60 million people. And this is the data according to the erstwhile planning commission. And most of the percentage of peoples, they were Adivasis and Asilis Dalis, that is scheduled caste and scheduled tribes. So this is also one cause of concern. So if you're talking about due to this development and this having some negative impact on environment so that is also showing some extreme events extreme events are evident for example here we had super hot summer that should be a warning so even even if we have not learned from the earlier events of extreme temperatures erratic rainfall cloud burst and cyclones so some extreme events like so there is very high temperature that is seen in this summer there's a very high temperature so apart from that we are also seeing some unseasonal rainfall erratic rainfall and in some areas we are seeing drought is there and cloud burst is happening and as well as cyclone so because of this cloud burst that led to the floods in number of areas especially in this monsoon so even Lancet Planetary Health Journal article says that extreme temperature that is increasing of temperature which is responsible for 7,40,000 excess deaths annually that is for every year. So there is some excess death of 7,40,000 cases because of extreme temperature that will lead to heat stroke that will lead to some other important health, health impacts. And majority of these are likely to be laborers. So who are affected? There is laborers who is working in this construction sites or agriculture laborers, farmers and other vulnerable sections who they have to work, they have to live and they have to commute with these temperatures and they do not have proper access to this air conditioning, appropriate clothing, etc. So these were the vulnerable people due to this extreme temperature. And yearly there will be like 7 lakh 40 thousand deaths and now you can imagine so how people are suffering with this extreme temperature so we are sitting happily in the cities and we are sitting happily in these air conditioned rooms right so but those facilities are not available for them and if you're talking about how can we enable sustainability or sustainable uh, a sustainable thing in this uh, climate change and as well as uh, development so here we are having a biggest challenge that is India's biggest challenge that is to attain ecological sustainability. So ecological sustainability be ensured while generating livelihood security and as well as dignity for more than a billion of people. So how can we ensure that? So it is a big question. So for this question, yes, we have some answers. So we came up with some case studies like 5,000 Dalit women farmers of Deccan Development Society, they have demonstrated how organic, 
how rain fed farming with traditional seed diversity that can provide full food security and as well as sovereignty so actually 5000 dalit women farmers they focused on especially organic rain fed farming and they focused on traditional seed diversity and how they provide the food security and sovereignty and not only this if you're talking about another sector that is weaver sector so several hundreds of handloom weavers in this gujarat region so they have shown how dignified and creative livelihoods can be revived based on organic kala cotton so it is a mix of traditional and as well as new silk and next one here is community led eco tourism so here for example some states like uttarakhand and some areas like ladakh and sikkim they has combined increased earning in this ecologically sensitive visitation so in this way yes we can promote this sustainability so this is about this topic and now let us try to say next topic it is regarding coming 75 years so this article which is talking about yes we need to focus on the science and technologies in the coming 75 years so now let us try to understand this topic so i will try my level best to make you understand this because so this topic is absolutely important from your means so now let us try to see this topic actually it is focusing on standard of living of people so india will india can and india will provided there is a shift is foc uh, in focus to science and technology yes now we can focus and now we can shift our focus on the science and technology but how will india make this happen given that it spends a meager of 0.7 percentage of gdp on research and development so yes what happened just now just we are spending 0.7 percentage of our gross domestic product on this research and development but how can we shift our focus in the science and technology with this very little amount of spending on this research and development so this is one question which posed by author so here it needs to make some foundational policy and we need to come up with some changes to facilitate the transition so if you want to focus on this moving towards the science and technology and if you want to focus on this transition so yes we need to come up with a foundational policy and we need to increase our uh, research and development budget to 4 percentage at present it is just 0.7 percentage we need to increase from 0.7 percentage to 0. Uh, sorry 4 percentage okay so whenever there is increasing of spending in this research and development yes we can ensure individual institutional implement process and we can accommodate large budget such that it will encourage individual entrepreneurs okay and we can link science with the society as well so these will be the advantages whenever there is increasing of spending in this research and development so if you are talking about strengthening infrastructure so how we can strengthen this infrastructure so first whenever we are increasing our spending to 4 percentage in this research and development so it mainly requires in science and innovation we need to drive science and innovation in this sector for example if you are talking about some case studies like israel like south korea they are the prime examples primary examples they drive their respect to economies through spending or through increase in the spending in this research and development and these countries like israel and south korea they spend about 5 percentage of gdp on this research and development so this is the first thing that we can do and to achieve this yes we need first class infrastructure okay and not only this we need well trained and globally competitive institutional administrators and processes to achieve this and we need to also upgrade our infrastructure in our universities and second thing that we can do here is before any policy changes take effect so individual institutions they need to implement process to accommodate the large budget okay so we need to implement so not only coming up with the policy but we need to implement them and for the implementation yes we need standardizing procedures so you will have to go through the analysis like so which institutions you are doing good and what are the practices you are coming up and we can get some of the good practices from those institutions and we can implement here that is we can borrow some best practices of some global counterparts 
and inadequate staffing at funding agencies and whenever there is lack of transparency in this fund dispersal and whenever there is lack of rigorous international standard so here that will be having some negative setback so we need to focus on proper funding agencies and proper staffing and we need to focus on transparency etc and as part of the solution to bring implement the best practices from industry and we need to focus on some best run science grant administrations board okay so to ensure this yes we need to come up with the borrowing or bringing and implementing some best practices from the industries as well and the third one here is so here if you want to bring the fruits of science and technology then here we need to promote and facilitate individual entrepreneurs okay so if you want to bring the fruits of the science and technology yes we need to encourage this individual entrepreneurs and we need to promote them so to make this happen universities they need to encourage scientists and we need to innovate and we need to come up with standardized procedures and entrepreneurship will only succeed in india if it is backed by funnel of ideas we need to come up with some liberal processes and we need to come up with some ideas out okay of our university lab so we need to upgrade our university labs so why we need to focus on the science and technology because so we need to now realize that the next war okay the next generation wars will not be like a physical wars like throwing of bombs it is not like military wars it is not like economic wars but it is only science and technology driven economy and we need to prepare for that and we need to prepare us for that so this is about this topic and now let us try to see next topic is regarding understanding ethanol blending so number of times we discussed this topic again in our today's newspaper in text and context so this is the article which appeared and there is no choice for me i have to discuss this so this topic is important from your gs paper 3 under environment and ecology and even this is important from our economy point of view so now this topic is important from your gs uh, paper 3 and you can expect prelims and as well as some uh, mains related questions from this ethanol blending topic so if you see context it mainly says that blending ethanol with petrol okay so we are adding ethanol to the petrol so whenever we are adding this ethanol to the petrol it is called as ethanol blending and whenever there is ethanol which is added with this petrol that will leads to complete burning so because of this there is a less fossil fuel okay it will burn the less fossil fuel while running vehicles that is called this method is called as ethanol blending so from where we can get this ethanol so ethanol we can get from this agriculture by product so it is mainly obtained from the processing of sugar from sugar cane and also from other sources like rice husk maize etc so it mainly comes from this biofuels so if you are talking about what is this ethanol ethanol it is a one of the principal biofuels and it is naturally produced by fermentation of sugars by yeast or by a petrochemical process so through this petrochemical process and the fermentation of sugar by the yeast so in this process this ethanol it is produced so we are talking about ethanol blending program so this program which is aimed at reducing the country's dependence on the crude oil as you all know india it is mostly depend upon this crude oil and we are importing from the other countries for example saudi arabia and recently we are also importing this crude oil from this russia at the discounted prices so here we are mainly dependent upon the imports okay so when we are blending this ethanol with the petrol that is when we are adding this ethanol with petrol that will decreases our dependence on this crude oil imports and even that will lead to complete combustion of the fuel so that there is less carbon emissions will be released into atmosphere and whenever we are getting this crude uh, this ethanol from the agricultural waste that will be also boosting this farmers income so these will be some advantages and if you're talking about so how much amount of this ethanol will be blended so what is the target so government of india has advanced to target of 20 percentage of ethanol blending in petrol okay the target here is 2025 from 2030 earlier it was like 2030 but now recently it changed to 2025 so what is the significance of this ethanol blending so first one is so that will help to reduce our dependency on the imports for example dependency on petrol 
okay so here blending of ethanol to gasoline it will also reduce the amount of petrol required to run a car okay so because of this we can decrease our dependence on this imported oils because india imports about 85 percentage of all of its oil requirements from the other countries okay so we are heavily dependent okay according to this sir data we can say india is heavily dependent and it will also saves money so whenever there is decreasing of import then what happened yes we can save our forex exchange reserves and that will also decreases the and decreases the amount of spending from the government as well so how much so india's net import of petroleum was 185 million tons in 2020 to 21 and at a cost of us dollars 551 billion and most of the petroleum products they are used in transportation and they for here ethanol blending 20 percentage program that will save about us dollars 4 billion annually okay so we can save us dollars 4 billion annually when we are going for ethanol blending and the target here is 20 percentage of ethanol blending and will be also less polluting because ethanol it is a less polluting fuel when we are comparing to other fossil fuels because when we are blending this ethanol with petrol that will lead to complete combustion of this petrol such it will leave, leave less carbon emissions into atmosphere and next topic it is regarding asian cheetahs will stuck in transit so here yes we are talking about translocation of this cheetahs from africa to india especially in mp we have kuno national park so this topic is important from your environment and ecology which comes under your gs paper 3 and this topic is important from your prelims and also from your mains point of view so from prelims you have to know about what is this project tiger and you can talk about tiger senses and even some facts regarding this african cheetah etc and from mains you have to know about what are the advantages what are the issues regarding the stance location of this animal so why it is in news so india came up with ambitious project of france location of african cheetahs so actually it had been missed the deadline of august 15 so because of this this is in news so why there is a crossing of deadline so though agreements have been signed with both south africa and namibia administrative delays as well as the presence of leopards in the, in the cheetahs prospective destinations so the kuno palpur forest is mp or believed to be the barriers to their arrival so actually already the agreement which had been signed between india and south africa okay uh, india and south africa regarding this translocation of this uh, african cheetah but there are some administrative delays that are happening okay and as well as presence of leopards in the cheetah's prospective destination especially in this kuno palpur forest reserve it is believed to the uh, barriers for their arrival so when we want to translocate this african cheetahs into this kuno national park so actually in this area already this cheetah uh, this leopards were present so because of this is acting as a barrier for the arrival of this african cheetahs into india so india's action plan here is like a long-term translocation project it has made public in february itself so why we need to come up with this translocation of this African cheetahs? Because in 1952 itself, the cheetahs earlier used to present in India, they had been become extinct. And state has around 10 to 12 eng would be imported from this Namibia or South Africa so as founder stock during the first year. So during the first year, we said that we are going to get at least 10 to 12 eng, eng cheetahs. So the animal's lineage and genetic history that would be examined to ensure that they are not uh, not from an excessively inbred stock and they were in ideal and reproductive age group so that they consider a suitable founding population okay so these are some important details and if you're talking about some facts so cheetah it is one of the oldest of big cat species and if you're talking about ancestors of this cheetah that can be traced back more than 5 million year, years and they belongs to this Miocene era and cheetah it is also the one of the world's fastest land mammal and this cheetah which lives in Asia and as well as in Africa so if we're talking about what are the threats first one here is human wildlife conflict so what happened earlier during the medieval period so the kings they used to go for uh, killing of these cheetahs okay as a part of uh, 
a hobby okay for they will going for hunting in the forest so they used to kill these cheetahs and that led to the extinction of these cheetahs in india and even some threats from the loss of habitat loss of prey illegal trafficking of this cheetah for the skin next one is deforestation and ag agriculture they eventually led to less forest land and cheetah habitat etc so even because of this climate change and growing human populations so they are making those problems very much worse so we are talking about some facts regarding this kuno national park of madhya pradesh it is one of the most unique destinations of all wildlife lovers and as well as enthusiast so it has healthy population of cheetah sambar nilgai wild pig chinkara cattle so because of this here whenever we are going for reintroduction okay translocation of this cheetah so they will be getting a good prey base and currently the leopard and striped hyena they are only the larger carnivores you are present in this national parks okay so this is about this kuno national park and now let us try to see the location so this is our madhya pradesh so here we have this kuno national park okay so this is the location and now let us try to see a small announcement we in rathods is we came up with this prelims test series 2023 and here we are going to provide 30 test along with your csat So the cost here is just a three hundred rupees. That means for one test, it is just hundred rupees. So for one question, you are going to pay just one rupee. So this is a very very economical and economical and also very very affordable. So try to join this course for sure, and this will be helpful to understand how the questions will be framed, and we are not compromising on the quality as well. And one more thing here is, so if you join this test series, then you can understand whether you are in a right way or not. so whether you are going to eliminate the answers or not so how you are coming with approach to the correct answer so this will be very helpful so try to join this course okay and if you want to join this course so please visit our website that is rathorsisacademy.com and try to register with the email id and uh, you can do the payment there itself and if you have any doubts so please call me on this number 8074765513 and now let us try to see some more important articles that appear in other sources Title says why family needs to be at the heart of India's health system. So here this article is focusing on India's health system. So health is just one of the important area where we need to focus. So if there is a good education and good health in the country, that will leads to ultimate development of that country. Correct. So here we are focusing on this India's health system in this article. So this topic is important from your GS paper to under health. and this topic is important from your mains so now let us try to see this topic in detail and let us try to focus why it is in news so here this article is talking about evaluation of health care in india so talking about health system in india we are having a multi tiered structure for example at village levels we have this primary health care centers and at the block level we have community health care centers and at the district level we have district hospitals or medical colleges right so in the village levels we have primary health care centers so here a community worker operates and they provide services they are covering like 12 dcs or what are the needs you are present and at the block level we have 30 bed community health care operated hospital and they will be having at least four specialist at the district level we have district hospital or medical college so if you see this image you can see we have primary level secondary level and tertiary level so in the primary level we have primary health care centers we have sub health centers and the secondary level we have community health centers in the block level and sub district hospitals and the tertiary levels we have district hospitals and as well as medical colleges they will be providing some multi speciality services So we're talking about history of health care reforms in India. So first reforms that we came up in year 1946 that before we got independence through this Bor Committee report, and we have this Kartar Singh Committee report in 1973, and later on we came up with this National Rural Health Mission of 2005, and recently we came up with reforms regarding Ayushman Bharat Mission in 2019. so we are focusing on this nrhm that is national rural health mission so it is a remarkable as it set as india's public health standards okay and they came with the standards for the infrastructure human resource in the hospital services they are to be delivered and finally this led to the three tier system okay 
threefold increase in the budget as well. And if you're talking about what are the outcomes, so after coming up with this national rural health mission, so what are the positive outcomes? So that led to increasing of institutional deliveries. So what is the meaning of institutional deliveries? So deliveries earlier they used to happen in the houses. We have some midwives, okay? But midwives or mandrasanis. But now here people they are going to nearby hospitals to have their delivery. Okay, so that is called as institutional deliveries. So institutional deliveries means deliveries are happening in the hospitals under the supervised medical practitioner. And institutional deliveries had been increased from 41% in 2005 to 89% in 2021. And even EMMR, that is maternal mortality ratio, which has been decreased from 407 to 113 okay and these are mainly calculated for 1 lakh women and next one here is infant mortality rate it had been reduced from 58 per thousand live births to 28 per thousand live births in 2021 so these are some achievements of this national rural health mission so i want to give you one main question here so mention the issues with public health care system in india how can these issues can be addressed? Explain. So here are two parts are there. So first one is you have to identify issues. And second one is you have to give the measures. That is a way forward. And now let us try to see the next topic it is regarding India's big problem of low quality employment. So we are facing some issues regarding low quality of employment. And this article is exclusively important from your economy which comes at a GS paper 3. And that too from your mains not from your prelims. So now let us try to see why it is in news. So recently one report released and the title of that report is Impact Assessment Study of Labor Reforms. So report name here is Impact Assessment Study of the Labor Reforms and it analyzed labor reforms and they were conducted in states like Rajasthan, Maharashtra, AP, Tamil Nadu, Jharkhand, UP and it is between 2004 to 2018, 19. So the status of employment here is between 1980 to 1990. So every one percentage of GDP growth generated about 2 lakh new jobs. So whenever there is increasing of GDP growth, okay, that is creating about 2 lakh new jobs. And in 1990 to 2000, so whenever there is every one percentage of GDP growth, that generated only 1 lakh job. Okay, so just within one decade, there is decreasing of 1 lakh job with one percentage of increasing of GDP is seen. That means we can see there is a low quality employment. And if you are talking about trends in the labor reforms, so pre that is before 2014 reforms, so government just focusing on focused on this labor administration and it came up with the processing of simplification and digitalization. But here after this 2014 reforms, we came up with the content of new laws that is new labor codes, new labor reforms. And if you are talking about the main question, so what are the issues in the current labor laws in the country? So examine the need for carrying out labor reforms to progress the performance of India's manufacturing sector. So here also there are two questions and try to address these two questions. And next topic here it is regarding Bal Aadhaar. So Bal Aadhaar initiative over 79 lakh children enrolled in four months. So here this article says that over 7.9 million children who are aged up to 5 years, they had been enrolled under this uh, Bal Aadhaar initiative. So if you are talking about some details, it mainly says that, so the Bal Aadhaar, it is a precursor to standard Aadhaar and it is mainly issued in a blue color, okay. So if you are talking about normal Aadhaar card, so we have white in color, but this Bal Aadhaar, it is, it is like a standard Aadhaar and it is, it is, it is mainly given in the blue color for the children. And after the expiration of this Aadhaar, so they need to go for regular Aadhaar. So regular Aadhaar will be issued after expiration of this Baal Aadhaar. So what are the benefits of this Baal Aadhaar? So Baal Aadhaar it works as a facilitator in availing the several welfare benefits to the children. And also it works as a digital photo identity for the children. And how it is different from this Aadhaar? So biometrics to establish uniqueness, okay, biometrics to establish uniqueness for this bar other is not collected okay but if you're talking about other so iris scan and even the fingerprints will be taken but in this bar other they are not taking this item this thing like biometrics and just a facial image of children is instead taken for the enrollment but not here we can say like biometrics so biometric authentication of the parent or guardian as a proof of relationship 
it is mainly taken okay and if you are talking about what is the criticism regarding this bal aadhar from this cag so cag mainly says that so when you are going for issuing of this bal aadhar for the children without biometrics so we are not taking biometrics it is an issue and as soon here is this needs to be renewed because anyway after 5 years child need to apply for a new aadhar so why we need to get up with this bal aadhar so it is a issue from this cag so if we talking about some facts regarding this uidai it is a statutory body and this body which had been established on 12th july 2016 and if you are talking about parent body that is a ministry of electronics and information technology it is a parent body and if you see the mandate so here uidai is mandated to assign 12 digit unique identification number that is uid aadhar to all the residents of india and if you are talking about total so as of 31st october 2021 uidai has issued about 131.68 crore aadhar numbers okay so this is about this static portion regarding this uidai and here here you can see this is the blue aadhar this bal aadhar so you will be getting just image of uh, your child that's it so bal aadhar can be used till the child reaches the age of 5 years okay mandatory biometric update is required for this child aadhar so when you are going for this uh, for this application of this aadhar so there we can go for biometrics okay so this is about this topic and now let's try to see the prelims practice questions so today's questions are already appeared in our previous years upsc prelims so first one is triclosan considered as a harmful as a harmful when exposed to high levels for a long time it is most likely present in which of the following so this question appeared in 2021 prelims food preservatives fruit ripening substances reduced plastic containers next one is toiletries so it is present in this toiletries and this one is we he wrote biographies of mazini garibaldi shivaji and shri krishna stayed in america for some time and he was also elected to central assembly he was so this question appeared in 2018 So that is Arvind Ghosh, Bipin Chandrapal, Laj, Lala Lajpat Rai, and Motilal Nehru. So it is Lala Lajpat Rai. And this one is Nagarno Karabakh, recently seen in the news. Okay, it is a conflict area between. So first one is Russia and Ukraine. Second one is China, Mongolia. Third one is Armenia, Azerbaijan. Fourth one is Sudan and Ethiopia. So if you have uh, listened to the yesterday's lecture, this answer is very easy. That is between Armenia and Azerbaijan. So now let us try to see the topic of the day. So, topic of the day here is how these V-shaped and U-shaped valleys had been formed. So, for example, if you take this is a hard rock. For example, let us take this hard rock. So, on this hard rock, so this river which started moving. Okay, let us take this is the river. Okay, so this river which is moving on this hard rock in this way. So, wherever the river which is moving, yes, it will be act. It will be also leads to the erosion of this hard rock. And first, it will leads the formation of a V-shaped valley like this. Okay, and in this V-shaped valley, here water will be moving. That is, river will be moving in this way. So, whenever the uh, river it is moving in this way, so it will also leads to erosion on the sidewards. So, finally, it will leads to the formation of U-shaped valley. So, after forming this uh, forming this U-shaped valley, it will be not stopping. Again, it will leads to the formation of deep, deep U-shape. That is called as George. So after forming of this George, also it will be not quite. So it will leads to the lateral ex lateral erosion. So it will be like this shape. So this is called as Kenyon. So first in this erosional features of rivers, this a movement of move, moving water. So first V shape valleys will be formed, and next U shape valleys is formed. So we can see George will be formed, and Kenyons will be formed. Okay. So first is V shape valley, second shape is U shape, and next one is George, and next one is Canyons. So you have to remember this. And now let's try to see the vocabulary. So first one is sustenance. Sustenance means the maintaining of someone or something in life. So we are maintaining. Next one is prospects. Prospects means the possibility or likelihood of some future event. So we are going. We are mainly thinking about the future event that is called as prospects. for example you can talk about world's population prospects that is the thing which means that how the population will be going to be in the future next one is mold 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 means street slavishly or roughly that is called as mold so these are the some important words that we can see in the first editorial 
So now let us try to see the today's Hindu newspaper PDF. So before that, we also came up with this foundational course in our Rathors IES Academy and the validity of this course here is two years. And here we are providing more than 600 hours of video classes and we are focusing on each and every topic of your UPSC syllabus with the conceptual clarity. And we are providing one-to-one -one mentorship and mains answer rating practice and prelims test series which is free if you are enrolling to this course. And one more thing here is on every Sunday there will be live classes also. Okay, try to join this course if you want to get some installment uh, opportunity. Yes, we are ready to provide installment opportunity also. So you can, if you have any doubts, you can call me on this number 8074765513. Okay, and if you want to watch the demo videos, you can visit our website ratosaisacademy.com. There you can watch three demo videos without paying a single penny. Okay, so now let us try to see the today's Hindu newspaper PDF. So this is our today's Hindu. Date is August 17th and this is Delhi edition. So here this topic is important. The first one it is regarding Chinese tracking vessel reaches Sri Lanka's airport. Okay, so the name of that ship here is Yong Wang 5. So China satellite tracking vessel that is Wang Yong Wang 5 arrived at the Sri Lanka southern Hamban Tota port on Tuesday. Despite India and US, they are, they are having some concern regarding this arrival of this Chinese satellite tracking vessel. Okay, so here this is the cause, this is the issue here, and we have to see what will happen in the future. And if you move forward here, you can see African cheetah still stuck in transit. So, this topic already we discussed. And this one is man lynched in Alwar on suspicion of theft. So, still now here there is some lynching is happening. So, we have to focus on this lynching and what are the laws which are present against this lynching. So, you have to focus on that, and, and it is your homework, students. And if you move forward, here in this fourth page here, you can see new lab to improve PDS efficiency. That is public system lab was inaugurated in IIT Delhi to develop scalable solution for the civic systems and as well as service that impacts the lack of people. Okay, so this lab which mainly set up by IIT Delhi in partnership with United Nations World Food Program. Okay, so actually it is a focusing on how to curb uh, curb the corruption in this public distribution system and how to make it more efficient. So this uh, article that you can as a, you can add as a recent case study regarding how you are going to improve the efficiency of this public distribution system. And if you move forward in this page number six, there is nothing much important. And this states page page number seven also there is nothing much important and you, and you can directly go on to this editorial page. So in this page, I discussed about development and environment and there is one uh, article regarding this uh, remission without reform. So this article which is focusing on premature release of prisoners okay, on this independence day and there is one article regarding science and technology already I discussed this topic and I discussed about so how we need to focus or why we need to focus on the science and technology. So I discussed this topic and in this text and context, I discussed about this ethanol blending. And if you move forward, in this page number 12, there is nothing much important. But in this page number 13, so there is one article, it is regarding defense equipment given to army. So you can go through this uh, topic once. And here in this page number 14, there is one important news article that is regarding three, uh, Talak E. Hassan. Supreme Court said that practice of Talak E. Hassan not so improper. And we have to see this topic in detail. So actually, Yes, we know that Supreme Court said unconstitutional that is regarding triple talaq but not this trip but not this talaq e hasan. So regarding this triple talaq, so government said uh, sorry that is Supreme Court said that it is unconstitutional. So instant talaq that is there uh, here in this uh, Muslim marriages. So there is a uh, one uh, one thing which is regarding this divorce is present. Uh, for example, here instant talaq that is Husband will be saying talaq, talaq, talaq three times either in a written form or in the oral form to the wife and that will lead to divorce. But here this talaq e hasan which is different. So this in this talaq e hasan it is a form of divorce uh, by which Muslim man can divorce his wife by saying talaq once in one month. Okay, so they have to say talaq for three times. So these three times will be said one time in one month and second time in next month and third time in third month. That means within this three months of time, they can say this talaq three times. 
Okay, Supreme Court said that Muslim personal law practice that is talaq e hasan is not so improper. It is not so improper because they have this uh, kula. Okay, they can opt for kula. Okay, so because of this, it is not so improper. So this is the thing which mainly said. So talaq e hasan, here the petitioner says that talaq e hasan, which is arbitrary, and irrational and contrary with the articles 14, 15, 21 and 25 and International Convention of Civil Rights and Human Rights etc. So this is the thing which mainly said by this petitioner. Okay and petitioner also argued that the practice in question was neither harmonious with the modern principles of human rights, gender, e gender equality nor an integral part of Islamic faith. So these are some important things that are going on and we have to see actually there will be a number of editorials that will appear in our today uh, Hindus editorial. So whenever we are getting editorials we are going to discuss that there. And one more article here is child mortality has dipped 35 per thousand birds. So India had taken rapid strides okay rapid steps to decrease this uh, child mortality since 2014 from 45 per thousand live birds to 35 per thousand live birds in 2019 so this is the thing which mainly said by union union uh, minister of state for health okay so this is the thing which mainly said and now if you move on to next topic here in this world space that is page number 15 here you can see china unveils plan to boost birth rate actually you know that china opted for this two child policy one child policy but now what happened there is one one fear that uh, that came in this China here is so there is decreasing of this youth population but increasing of old age population so because of this China announced some important step to encourage the, encourage the families to have more babies okay as birth rate which hit a record low in this uh, China so they came up with some step like increasing of spending on reproductive health and to improve the child care services and they also said that they are going to provide some fertility support measures like offering subsidies for the pregnants and tax rebates for the people who are having more child and better health insurances and education opportunities, housing and employment support etc for young females. Okay, and they are also focusing on providing of enough nurseries for the children who are between the 2 to 3 years by the end of the year. So this is about the steps taken by the China to increase the children. And this one here is July holds an inflation shows to 13.9 percentage. Already we discussed this topic number of times. And India buys pet coke from Venezuela. So you have to know about what is this pet coke, what are the advantages of this pet coke and where is this Venezuela is located. So this is your homework. And this one is China to boost demand speed up infrastructure. So these are some important articles that appear in our today's Hindu which are very much important and relevant from our UPSC point of view. So I hope you enjoyed this lecture. So if you really like this video, so try to hit the like button and uh, please try to share this video for your friends also. So this will be beneficial from them, for them also. So here if you are new to this Rathor Science Academy, so try to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon so that you will be getting regular notifications. So by this I am concluding. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. Thank you so much and have a nice day.